All right, so welcome back. Let's move on to the next part of our series looking at uh, how do we prioritize our trading. So now this part, we're going to deal with need. And here's the thing. We have to be really, really honest. We have to be brutally honest with this part because this is probably the easiest area where people start taking all these detours and going down rabbit holes. We have to look at two parts of the need. Number one, what is the plausible situations we're going to find ourselves in? Right? And it's always going to be different for everybody. If I live in New York City and I'm, I've got three kids and I'm, uh, say, partially disabled, my needs are going to be different than if I'm a recently retired tier one operator um, at the peak. Everything's great. I'm in great shape. I have no wife or kids, no responsibility. And I'm living in rural Texas, right? The, our, uh, the majority of situations those two people are going to find themselves in are going to be vastly different. So we have to really, really be honest. What are the things that are most likely to happen to us? So we can look at, you know, Tom Givens always talks about looking at newspapers. Look at your local newspaper. Look, watch the, the police report. Just see what are the typical crimes and what are the trends in your community. That's one. Um, then we kind of add on, hey, what's going on in the world, right? When, you know, you talk about terrorist activity and think about whether that might happen to you or not, you know. It's up to you, but again, we look at those kind of things and how, what's the chance that that's gonna to happen to you? Obviously, if you, again, are living in a major metropolitan area, the chance that you might find yourself in a terrorist type, active shooter type incident is probably gonna be slightly bigger than if you live in a ranch in Montana, right? So we have to be very careful Look at your need and be honest. The other part that we have to be brutally honest, and this is where things can really go sideways, is what are what are the skills you uh, you are already bringing to the table? What, what, what are you already good at? Um, if you are somebody who's very athletic and your strength and condition is already good, you might want, you might enjoy that kind of thing. You might like to do that, but you have to ask yourself, am I wasting time doing it? Do I already have a decent skill level there? And then do I need to take some of that time away from that skill maintenance and use it someplace else where you're weaker? Um, if you're a pistol shooter, let's say you're a great pistol shooter. You spend a lot of money, you've got a great gear, you practice all the time, you dry fire, you take a you know, handful of shooting courses every year, maybe you compete. All that's awesome. I'm not saying that's not some, something we should look to not do, but if you've already built a high level of skill, if you already have that, we have to separate, well, what do we need to do for a reasonable level of kind of maintenance versus just adding on extras. Um, yeah, I'll give you myself as, as an example. I'm on the jujitsu mats five days a week. Now, here's the thing. I'm already a black belt. I've been doing this for 24 years, you know, jujitsu. I compete. I'll do all that kind of stuff. From a self-defense perspective, I'm... I'm wasting time from a pure self-defense perspective because I already have a skill set. Probably by the time you reach purple belt in any legitimate gym and so you've got a handful of competitions under your belt, you're going to be able, you're going to be prepared as much as possible for, with a physical skill set for 95, 96, 97 percent of any situation you're going to find yourself in that you might need to use that skill set. So anything after that becomes sort of a, I don't want to say a waste of time because that's not the point, but you are using time that could be used for something else that you're not good at. Now, the reason I spend a lot of time doing jujitsu is as a teacher, 
I'm teaching it multiple times a week. I do seminars. Um, I compete. So it's, it's more than what I do for self-defense. It's sort of my avocation. But I have to be very careful and very honest with myself to say, hey, that time I'm doing jujitsu, what am I taking away from in other areas? What about... What about my strength conditioning? Well, that's pretty good. I mean, I'm rolling all the time, so I have a decent level, and nobody's overpowering me. Can I get stronger? Sure. Can I get more cardio? Sure. But that's not a weakness. My pistol shooting skills? Eh, okay, they're good. Right now, I'm at a decent level right now. I've been training and practicing, and I dry fire pretty much every night. Um, but my medical skills? I'm, I, I've done stuff, but are they where they should be? Probably not. I probably should be looking for a weekend course of somebody. Should I, I should be looking to do something else. Um, my driving skills, eh, pretty good, but, you know, I've been driving 30 plus years. You know, do I take things for granted? Probably. I should be looking for other stuff. So again, we have to say, what are we already good at? What are the levels, what, what are the levels of things that we still need to do? And then from there, then we can decide... What's the next step? What should I then put in? And maybe the stuff that you're already doing, that you're already good at, maybe you cut that down a hair. Maybe you sacrifice a little bit. One day less a week on the mats. One day less a week lifting weights. You know, One day less uh, shooting per month and allocate that to something else. So be brutally honest with your situation and where you're at for yourself. And then you can start to see what do I really need, okay? Then we'll come back and we'll start and we'll talk about after that point, All right?